Hello and welcome to this video by Inspire Cows. My name is Mike Steele and I'm a dairy coach from Inspire Cattle Solutions. And today we're going to talk about birth and about how cows give birth and what we can do to help them do so, to maximize the number of animals that we might have for replacements in the future. This is the future of our herd and if we get this right, then we're in a great start. So the very first thing to remember about birth is that we are there to save the mother. The calf is a bonus and it's really good if we keep a nice live calf, but ultimately we're there to save the mother because she's going to be giving us the money back in the next lactation. So just as everything, preparation is important. We need to have everything ready and make sure we're all prepared for this event. So cleanliness, cleanliness is the very first thing. We need to have nice, clean, deep bedding and nice clean water available and some tools if we need them and make sure they're clean as well. Make sure as well that everyone's ready and that all of the staff that are involved in this procedure are trained. This is really important so that we all know the protocols and we all know what's happening. Another thing that's always useful on any dairy is to have somewhere to record something. So a chalkboard or a whiteboard somewhere close to what we're doing is really important. And then anyone that's marked down anything unusual or can mark anything down to say what's happened, then anyone that's walking past can tell what's happened and not repeat the same thing or think that somebody else is going to do something. What do we need to get ready then? Well firstly there's people and with people we need to make sure that everyone's aware, everyone's trained and we've got good observation skills and good communication. Then there's management. So in management, we need to have all of the proto protocols ready and visible. So if there's a protocol for getting airways clear on the calf, a protocol on when to assist, a protocol for colostrum management and a protocol for navel dipping, all of those things need to be available for the staff that are inv involved in helping animals give birth. Then there's equipment. So for equipment, we need some nice clean water available for the cow to drink, but also available to us so that if we need to assist, then we can clean our hands, clean the areas and make sure everything's going to be nice and clean. So to have some soap ready and a towel is also really useful. Make sure you've got some lubrication because if we need to assist, then that's going to come in extremely handy. And Perhaps antimicrobials is a good idea. If you need to assist, then make sure that the animal is not going to be contaminated by the person. Then we've got carving aids and ropes, and they need to be nice and clean, and not too many knots in the ropes as well. We need navel dip, something that's going to not only act as a disinfectant, but also help to dry the navel down. So it needs some spirit in it that's going to evaporate quickly and help to dry the navel. And it needs to have something like iodine or some kind of disinfectant in there that's going to help stop it get contaminated. And we also need, really important here, a colostrum bag that can take at least three liters and the tube that goes with the colostrum bag to tube it down to the calf. That's equipment and now the environment. So to, for the environment we need to make sure that everything's nice and clean, we've got some deep bedding available, sufficient space around us, sufficient light so that everybody can see what they're doing and see what's happening. Um, it's a really good idea to have some clean drinking water available for the cow and a little bit of food that's appetizing doesn't really matter what as long as the cow wants to eat because her dry matter intake on that day is going to be extremely low. 
and if we need it make sure there's some heat abatement around if THI or the temperature humidity index is going to be over 68 then we need to do something about that now we can consider birth itself and birth comes in three stages the first one is when the contractions start and so we need to watch for this if we're walking past the close-up pen when we watch for this then we know we need to move the cow into the birthing pen then she's going to start to expel the sacs that are around the calf so the first one to see is a water bag this is called the corian and the last one that we see is the one that directly surrounds the calf and this is the amnion then we have stage two of labor and this is when she's actually giving birth so we're getting lots of contractions and we start to see some feet and a nose a head shoulders and the calf in birth and the last stage the third stage of labor is expelling of the afterbirth of the placenta and this one's really important because if they retain this that's going to mean problems in future reproduction and problems for the cow as well so what's the key to birthing success and the key to birthing success is mother nature nature is an extremely good mother and ideally we want the cow to give birth with no intervention whatsoever we want her to do it naturally with the least amount of stress available so make sure things are quiet make sure we're observing but we're not observing directly in the pen or interfering with anything at all so just let the animal get on with things especially in a first carver because first carver is going to be very nervous everything's new they don't know what's going on and we need to give them time to do things so the next question is when do we intervene if we need to stand back when do we need to stand forwards so birth should be progressive in time so what we could do is we could monitor things and when we're watching from a distance then we're measuring the time and in time birth should progress every 10 minutes so if there's been a little bit of progression each 10 minutes so the water bag comes and then it maybe fills up and then at the next time you've got a little bit of the calf poking out or the next time something's happening the calf is a little bit further out if there's progression then we can leave her alone we need to start worrying if there's no progression in 10 minutes and this is when we might need to step in and give some assistance so in stage one of labor we need to look out for those water bags and we need to make sure if we haven't done so that the cow can be moved a very short distance hopefully next to the close-up pen she can be moved into a pen where she's on her own nice clean bedding everything's clean there's no other animals around and she can be t given time to give birth herself then there's stage two of labor and stage two of labor is when we start to see the calf itself so what do we see first the answer is we see front feet and then we see a nose and then we see a head then we should see the shoulders then we should see the hips and then the hind legs and that all happens usually quite quite quickly so once we've seen the hips the calf usually comes out quite quickly it's a good idea after the cow has given birth to give her a little bit of time just to relax and give the calf and the placenta time to separate and to allow oxygen from the placenta to run back to the calf so 
don't intervene in there and break the placenta straight away. Just give her time, give nature some time. So if you do need to intervene, I'm going to show you a little clip now of intervention. And you'll notice that the person that's doing the intervening is nice and quiet, there's no distractions, and everything progresses nicely. If the calf is getting too big at any point and it's stuck at the shoulders, then I would recommend that you try and slip a very clean hand up towards the shoulders and see if you can get your hand past the shoulders. If you can't, then it's time to call in the professionals and call the vet for some assistance. The same goes for if the calf is stuck at the hips. So if it's stuck at the hips and you've managed to get it past the shoulders, then that's another time to call in for assistance, call the vet and get some professional help. Now the calf's been born, congratulations, but what if the calf is not breathing? It's still alive, you've got a heartbeat, but it's not breathing. So you need to act fast. Firstly, make sure the airway is clear. And then, if you can, you need to stimulate breathing. So one really useful thing is to pick up a piece of straw and tickle the inside of the nose, or even stick it a little bit further up the nose and stimulate a sneeze and this can sometimes be a lifesaver just to allow the calf to expel that first bit of fluid. If that's not worked then what you might need to do is pick up the calf and hold it upside down or put the legs over a gate or a railing and vigorously rub the calf's chest to try and get that fluid out of its nose so that it can take that first breath. If that's not worked then you may need to go for positive pressure ventilation. Now you can get tools to do this which is like uh, a mask that you can put on the calf's face and a balloon so that you can press the balloon and it will expel air into the lungs. But this may require some professional training. Now we'll talk about stage three of labor and expelling the placenta. I'm gonna show you a little clip now on what happens with this stage. The placenta should be expelled within 12 hours. If it's there beyond this, then what we need to do is we need to provide some antibiotics to the cow. This has been shown to increase first service conception rates and decrease the number of animals that are non-pregnant by 100 days after birth. So now it's a really good idea to record things. We've got a live mother, we've got a live calf, and everything's happened normally. 
and we need to start thinking about colostrum and whether or not the calf has had colostrum and we'll address this in the next video about new birth and neonatal calves. So thank you very much for listening. I've been Mike Steele and this is Inspire Cows, the channel dedicated to dairy health. If you like this video then please click like, click on subscribe and remember to press the bell notification so that you're notified when the next new video comes out to you. Thank you very much.